Chapter 15 Laws Concerning Offerings Then the Lord told Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you finally settle in the land I am giving you, you will offer special gifts as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. These gifts may take the form of a burnt offering, a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, a voluntary offering, or an offering at any of your annual festivals, and they may be taken from your herds of cattle or your flocks of sheep and goats. When you present these offerings, you must also give the Lord a grain offering of two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of olive oil. For each lamb offered as a burnt offering or a special sacrifice, you must also present one quart of wine as a liquid offering. If the sacrifice is a ram, give a grain offering of four quarts of choice flour mixed with a third of a gallon of olive oil, and give a third of a gallon of wine as a liquid offering. This will be a pleasing aroma to the Lord. When you present a young bull as a burnt offering, or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, or as a peace offering to the Lord, you must also give a grain offering of six quarts of choice flour mixed with two quarts of olive oil, and give two quarts of wine as a liquid offering. This will be a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Each sacrifice of a bull, ram, lamb, or young goat should be prepared in this way. Follow these instructions with each offering you present. All of you native-born Israelites must follow these instructions when you offer a special gift as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And if any foreigners visit you or live among you and want to present a special gift as a pleasing aroma to the Lord, they must follow these same procedures. Native-born Israelites and foreigners are equal before the Lord and are subject to the same decrees. This is a permanent law for you to be observed from generation to generation. The same instructions and regulations will apply both to you and to the foreigners living among you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you arrive in the land where I am taking you and you eat the crops that grow there, you must set some aside as a sacred offering to the Lord. Present a cake from the first of the flour you grind and set it aside as a sacred offering, as you do with the first grain from the threshing floor. Throughout the generations to come, you are to present a sacred offering to the Lord each year from the first of your ground flour. But suppose you unintentionally fail to carry out all these commands that the Lord has given you through Moses. And suppose your descendants in the future fail to do everything the Lord has commanded through Moses. If the mistake was made unintentionally and the community was unaware of it, the whole community must present a young bull for a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It must be offered along with its prescribed grain offering and liquid offering and with one male goat for a sin offering. With it, the priest will purify the whole community of Israel, making them right with the Lord, and they will be forgiven. For it was an unintentional sin, and they have corrected it with their offerings to the Lord, the special gift and the sin offering. The whole community of Israel will be forgiven, including the foreigners living among you, for all the people were involved in the sin. If one individual commits an unintentional sin, the guilty person must bring a one-year-old female goat for a sin offering. The priest will sacrifice it to purify the guilty person before the Lord, and that person will be forgiven. These same instructions apply both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. But those who brazenly violate the Lord's will, whether native-born Israelites or foreigners, have blasphemed the Lord and they must be cut off from the community. Since they have treated the Lord's word with contempt and deliberately disobeyed his command, they must be completely cut off and suffer the punishment for their guilt. Penalty for Breaking the Sabbath One day while the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they discovered a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. The people who found him doing this took him before Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the community. They held him in custody because they did not know what to do with him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must be put to death. The whole community must stone him outside the camp. So the whole community took the man outside the camp and stoned him to death just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Tassels on Clothing Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come, you must make tassels for the hems of your clothing and attach them with a blue cord. When you see the tassels, you will remember and obey all the commands of the Lord instead of following your own desires and defiling yourselves as you are prone to do.
The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all my commands and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. I am the Lord your God. Chapter 16 Korah's Rebellion One day Korah, son of Izhar, a descendant of Kohath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and An, son of Peleth, from the tribe of Reuben. They incited a rebellion against Moses, along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. They united against Moses and Aaron and said, You have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right do you have to act as though you are greater than the rest of the Lord's people? When Moses heard what they were saying, he fell face down on the ground. Then he said to Korah and his followers, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show us who belongs to him and who is holy. The Lord will allow only those whom he selects to enter his own presence. Korah, you and all your followers must prepare your incense burners, light fires in them tomorrow, and burn incense before the Lord. Then we will see whom the Lord chooses as his holy one. You Levites are the ones who have gone too far. Then Moses spoke again to Korah, now listen, you Levites, does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? Korah, he has already given this special ministry to you and your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The Lord is the one you and your followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? Then Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. But they replied, We refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill us here in this wilderness, and that you now treat us like your subjects? What's more, you haven't brought us into another land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We will not come. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, do not accept their grain offerings. I have not taken so much as a donkey from them, and I have never hurt a single one of them. And Moses said to Korah, You and all your followers must come here tomorrow and present yourselves before the Lord. Aaron will also be here. You and each of your 250 followers must prepare an incense burner and put incense on it, so you can all present them before the Lord. Aaron will also bring his incense burner. So each of these men prepared an incense burner, lit the fire, and placed incense on it. Then they all stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Meanwhile, Korah had stirred up the entire community against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. O oh God, they pleaded, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sins? And the Lord said to Moses, Then tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses got up and rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed by the elders of Israel. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them. If you do, you will be destroyed for their sins. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the entrances of their tents, together with their wives and children and little ones. And Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death, or if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord.
He had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men, along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them, and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with all their belongings. The earth closed over them, and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled when they heard their screams. The earth will swallow us too, they cried. Then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the two hundred and fifty men who were offering incense. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar son of Aaron the priest to pull all the incense burners from the fire, for they are holy. Also tell him to scatter the burning coals. Take the incense burners of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives and hammer the metal into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. Since these burners were used in the Lord's presence, they have become holy. Let them serve as a warning to the people of Israel. So Eleazar the priest collected the two hundred and fifty bronze incense burners that had been used by the men who died in the fire, and he hammered them into a thin sheet to overlay the altar. This would warn the Israelites that no unauthorized person, no one who was not a descendant of Aaron, should ever enter the Lord's presence to burn incense. If anyone did, the same thing would happen to him as happened to Korah and his followers. So the Lord's instructions to Moses were carried out. But the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering again against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned toward the tabernacle and saw that the cloud had covered it, and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle, and the Lord said to Moses, Get away from all these people, so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, Quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it out among the people to purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already begun to strike down the people, but Aaron burned the incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. But 14,700 people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair involving Korah. Then, because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. Chapter 17 The Budding of Aaron's Staff Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring you twelve wooden staffs, one from each leader of Israel's ancestral tribes, and inscribe each leader's name on his staff. Inscribe Aaron's name on the staff of the tribe of Levi, for there must be one staff for the leader of each ancestral tribe. Place these staffs in the tabernacle in front of the ark containing the tablets of the covenant, where I meet with you. Buds will sprout on the staff belonging to the man I choose. Then I will finally put an end to the people's murmuring and complaining against you. So Moses gave the instructions to the people of Israel, and each of the twelve tribal leaders, including Aaron, brought Moses a staff. Moses placed the staffs in the Lord's presence in the tabernacle of the covenant. When he went into the tabernacle of the covenant the next day, he found that Aaron's staff, representing the tribe of Levi, had sprouted budded, blossomed, and produced ripe almonds. When Moses brought all the staffs out from the Lord's presence, he showed them to the people. Each man claimed his own staff, and the Lord said to Moses, Place Aaron's staff permanently before the Ark of the Covenant, to serve as a warning to rebels. This should put an end to their complaints against me and prevent any further deaths. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. Then the people of Israel said to Moses, Look! We are doomed, we are dead, we are ruined. Everyone who even comes close to the tabernacle of the Lord dies. Are we all doomed to die?